In this video, we're going to learn how to use Django to extract values from a form that's been submitted in order to filter data. We're going to look at the Django query dict object in order to do that, and we're going to look at its get list function that allows you to extract multiple values for the same field in a form. And this is common, you might have a select box that allows you to submit multiple options. We're going to see how to extract those and use them in an ORM query on the back end to filter a query set. And at the end of the video, we're also going to see how we can use Django filter in order to do these operations as well. So let's dive in. So we have a Django application running just now, and we've got a list of servers on the page with a small form on the right hand side that allows us to filter those servers down. Now the code to do that filtering has not actually been written yet. We're going to do that very soon in this video. But let's imagine for now that this page here is the starting point and we have started a company and we're building the next AWS. So obviously we have a lot of work to do, but this is the starting point and we're building this back end or this console with Django. Now let's have a look at the code that we've got running on the back end. So we have a model here called server that stores the different servers that we have in this cloud system. And each server has a name and a server type. And the server type can be one of these. And you might recognize these as Amazon EC2 instance types. And we've got these stored in a Django text choices subclass. Now I've pre-populated the database with 10 servers here. And what we also have is a form. And that's what you see on the right hand side of this page here and it lists out all of the different server types. So the idea is we can filter down the servers that we see on this page by one or more of the selections on this form on the right hand side. And that form is represented in a Django form class called filter server type form. And this form contains a single field called server type, which is a forms.multiple choice field. And we've given that the widget of forms.checkbox select multiple. And finally, we have a Django view that is serving that code. We have the form in the context and we're fetching all of the servers from the back end in order to display those in the index.html template. So this code is already set up. If we look at index.html, we have a simple bit of HTML here where we have a table containing all of our servers from the context. And on the right hand side, we have a very simple form that sends a get request to the back end with the selected server type. And we're referencing the server type field on that form class. So what we're gonna do now is have a look at the front end and we're gonna see what happens to the URL when we actually select multiple of these and send them to the back end. Now let's start by selecting one, the T4G Nano. If we look at the URL at the top, you can see that it's added a server type query parameter and set that equal to what we've selected. Now the question for this video is what happens if we select multiple options here? So if I selected the nano and the micro option, when we submit that, you can see in the URL, we have two copies of the server type key and a different value for each one of them. And if I was to select all four of these, we would see four copies of the server type key in the URL and each value is added as the value for one of those keys. So the goal of this video is to take the values from the URL and use them to filter down the servers that we're getting back from the database. So rather than call server.objects.all, we're going to filter by the query parameter. But in doing so, we're going to learn a little bit about Django's query dict. And this is an object that Django takes on a get or a post request. And it's very similar to a Python dictionary. So let's get started and start looking at that object just now. Now to start with, what I'm going to do when we get the request is I'm actually just going to print out the request.get property. This get property will print out any data that's been sent in the get request and it's available on Django's request object. So let's look at that and I'm going to go back to this page and I'm going to just submit T4G Nano. So when I submit that, if we go back to the server, you can see the query dictionary at the bottom here. It has a key of server type and the value is a list with the value T4G Nano. And you can see the object here. This is an instance of Django's query dict object. Now, because in the Django form class, we've used a multiple choice field, the value in the query dictionary is actually a Python list containing a single element, which is T4G Nano. If we go back to the front end and select two of these, when we go back to the terminal here, you can see this time we have a list containing two elements. So because we've got a forms.multiple choice field, the value for the server type key that's being sent to the backend in this request.get property, that is actually going to be a list. 
Now, typically we want to extract these values from the request.get property and then use those values in order to do some filtering or some other work in the back end. What we're going to do is filter down the servers, but how do we get that property? Now, as I said, the query dict object is very similar to a Python dictionary. So what we can do is use the dot get function and that's a function that's on or a method that's on the Python dictionary object. And we can pass a key name into the dot get function. So the key that we have is called server type. And you can see that in the terminal when we printed out the request dot get property. So now we're going to print request dot get and then we're going to use the dot get function to extract the value for the server type key. So let's save this and go back to the page here. And if we submit T4G nano, when we submit that, if we go back to VS code, you can see on the terminal that has extracted that value. But there is a small problem here. If I was to submit multiple values, let's say we submitted the T4G nano and micro again. When we submit that, if we go back to VS Code, you can see we've only got one of these on the terminal. So when we call .get, it's only gonna return one value to us, even if we have selected multiple values. So what is the resolution for this? Now I'm going to go to a page in Django's documentation and it's the page on the Django request and response object. If we look at the sidebar on the right hand side, there's a page on query dict objects. So the Django HTTP request object, this has get and post attributes and those are instances of this query dict as we've seen in the terminal in this video. And this is a dictionary like class that's customized to deal with multiple values for the same key. That's necessary because some HTML form elements, such as select with the multiple property, they can pass multiple values for the same key. And that's the example that we have in our form here. We can select multiple options from these checkboxes and we can submit them to the back end and they're both added to the URL. And if we go back to the documentation, we can look at the methods that are on the query dict object. Now, because this is a subclass of the Python dictionary, it has all of the same dictionary methods that you might be familiar with, with a few exceptions that are outlined in the document. Now, what I want to look at is a particular function that's on this object. So let me try and find that just now. It's this function here, the query dict list function. And this function will return a list of data with the requested key. And this is guaranteed to return a list unless the default value provided is not a list. And this is very similar to the function that we used earlier, which is the dot get function. If we change that to dot get list and save this, when we go back to our form here and submit multiple values, if we go back to VS code, you can see that this time, instead of a single value, we now have a list containing all of the values that have been submitted. And the get list function, it's just an extension to the Python dictionary that's added to these Django query dict objects that allows it to extract multiple values for the same key. And we can see that this is guaranteed to return a list. So even if we only select a single item and submit that, if we go back to VS code, we can see that single item in a list. So it's a list containing a single element. And if we also submitted no items, if we go back to the form and just submit this with nothing selected, we're going to get back an empty list on the back end. So it's important to know that when you expect multiple values from a particular form field in Django, you can use the get list function to extract those from the request.get property. So don't use dot get if you expect multiple values because you're only going to get a single value back. So let's finish this example by actually making the form work. When we submit one of these filters here, we want to actually filter down the page that's returned from Django. So let's do that now. If we go back to the view, I'm going to remove this print statement here and I'm going to store the result of this in a variable called server types. So let's do that now. We've got a variable called server types that contains the user submitted data. We're then going to take this server.objects.all statement out of the dictionary itself and I'm going to create a server query set and I'm going to paste that in there. So by default, we're going to fetch all of the servers and then we're going to check if we have any server types. So let's check the length of the server types that were extracted from the get request. So that's going to be a list containing zero, one or more values. So if we have a length, that's going to evaluate to true if the user has submitted any server types. We can then filter down the server query set even further. So I'm going to reset server query set after calling dot filter. And remember our server model class has a field called server type. So let's copy that and go back to the filter statement. So the filtering that we're about to do is on the server type field. We want to only get back servers where the server type is one of the options that have been passed in that list. So we're going to use the in lookup 
So two underscores here and then the in lookup. And we're going to set that equal to the server types that have been extracted from the get request. Once we've done that, we can add the server query set into the context here. So I'm going to add that back into the context. And let me quickly go over this. So what we're doing is we're extracting from the get request the server types that have been submitted from this form that you see in the front end to Django. So we get those server types and then we have a server.objects.all query set. So we're building up the server query set here. And remember, query sets in Django are lazily evaluated. So that's not actually going to go and fetch all of the servers from the database. We're just building up the query set here. We then check on this page if the user has submitted any server types on the front end. In other words, is this list that we get back not empty? And if it turns out that the list is not empty, we then further filter down that base query set using the dot filter function and we look at the server types and check for only the server types that are in the options that have been submitted to the server. And the final step is simple. We just add that query set along with the form into our context. So let's now test this and see if it works by going back to our page. This time, when we select the nano and micro options, you can see that it has filtered down the table. We only get back the servers that are one of those types. And similarly, if we were just to select nano, we only get the nano server types. And if we submit this with nothing selected, we're going to get back all of the servers. And that's because with nothing selected, this will result in an empty list. And when we check the length of an empty list, that's going to evaluate to false. Therefore, this further filter statement is not going to be run. So that's the logic for this filtering. And we are using the request.get.getList function on the Django query dict object in order to extract multiple values for the same key in that form. Now this type of code, when you're writing these if statements and filtering based on get parameters, this can be simplified a lot by using something like Django filter. Now I'm going to run through an example very quickly here. I have a video on Django filter, so check that out if you need to. It should be appearing on the screen now. What we're going to do to start with is use the pip install command and I'm going to install Django filter into this environment. So Django filter is an external package. We need to install it in order to use it. Once we've got it installed, we can create a new file within the application and that's going to be called filters.py. And we're going to create something called a filter set here. So let's import Django underscore filters. And from the core.models file, I'm going to import that server model. So what we're going to create in this file is a class and we're going to call it server filter set. And that's going to inherit from the Django filters dot filter set class. And then within the class, we can define an inner class. And that's in the standard Django convention that's going to be called meta. So we need to define this class called meta. And within the meta class, we can use the model property. And we're going to set the model for this filter set to the server model. And also we can specify some fields that we want to filter against. I'm going to add the server type field. So it's going to be server underscore type. So we're going to add a filter set that's going to allow us to filter down the servers by the server type. We can now import the server filter set within the views.py file. So at the top, I'm going to copy this statement down and import the filter set from core.filters. And then we can actually remove all of this code here. What we can do instead is we can actually instantiate the filter set. So it's going to be the server filter set and we pass request.get into that. So we're passing the data from the get request into the filter set and we can specify a base query set that we're going to filter against and that's going to be server.objects.all. And finally, we can change what we have in the servers key in the context and we're going to take our filter set and we're going to access the dot query set property dot QS and that's going to give us the resulting query set from this Django filters filter set after we've filtered the base query set down by the get parameters. So in other words, we're going to take all of the servers and then we're going to take the values from the get request and we're going to filter down the query set based on that data. Let's save this and start the Django server and see if this is still working. Let's go back to the page and refresh the page. If we select nano and micro, you can see we're only getting back the micro options here. Now this is because of a small mistake I've made. If we go back to the filter set, because this is expecting multiple options, we need to actually tell Django filter that. So what I'm going to do is create a field here called server type, and that's going to be equal to a Django filters dot multiple choice filter. So it's the multiple choice filter we need to use for this field. And we need to provide choices to that. And that's going to come from our server model that has that server types subclass 
and we can use the dot choices property on that. So if your field might contain multiple values, you need to use the multiple choice filter in the Django filters package, or if it's a model, you can use the model multiple choice filter as well. So let's now save this and go back to our page. This time, if I select nano and micro, hopefully we're gonna get back both options now that we've used that multiple choice filter, and we do. So that's all for this video. In this video, we've shown how to work with Django query dict objects in order to extract values from the same key and there may be multiple of those values in the URL. And we saw how to use the query dict list function, which can be very useful if you have a field in a form that could have multiple values being submitted to the server. And we finished the video with an example of Django filter. If you're interested in more content like this, and if you would like to see how this page could be used with HTMX, let me know in the comments. We might do a very small follow-up video on that. But thank you for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so. Thanks again and we'll see you in the next video.